Welcome to the Eastern Caribbean, and we're here to answer one question and one question only. Which of these three options give you the best underwater footage of your dream vacation? Can you guess which camera did each of these clips? And why aren't we talking about the biggest flaw in the Insta360 X3? Well, actually, we're going to do just that. Let's go. The Insta360 X3 is a great little camera. I mean, it's had a ton of brilliant reviews on YouTube by some huge YouTubers. But there's one thing about it that's utterly rubbish. And it's the elephant in the room that nobody talks about in reviews. So what is it? And what are we going to do about it? Well, carry on watching because we're going to discuss it right now. Now, we do a lot of video recording on uh, on trips and we do a lot of sort of snorkeling and stuff like that. And I bought the Insta360 X3, A, because it was better quality than the X2, and B, because it was fully waterproof, a bit like the X2. But no one seems to address the issue that when you go underwater with it, the refraction of the water on the lenses is, causes the stitching to be so bad, it misses whole pieces out of the actual visual 360. Let me explain. When we went to Antarctica earlier this year, I took an X2 with me and we had an encounter with a leopard seal on our Zodiac and all I wanted to do was shove the 360 in the water and record what the leopard seal did. Simple, eh? But when I put it in the water, it did record, thankfully, because the water is almost zero degrees, so it actually worked really well. But Unfortunately, the stitch line meant that it missed large parts of the leopard seal. And my point is this, when you're going somewhere like Antarctica or the Caribbean like we are here, anywhere that needs something to work first time, all the time, and to get you that shot all the time, um, you need it to be reliable. Now, the problem was, nobody in any of the reviews actually said how bad the stitching was. It was terrible. And I bought the X2 on the premise I didn't have to spend extra on a dive case. And would a dive case make any difference at all to the quality of the stitching and the quality of the optics? And I was led to believe that being waterproof meant that you can go snorkeling with this and it would be very, very good. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's not very, very good. So I have had to spend more money on a dive case because, again, I don't want to miss those moments again. I don't want to miss the leopard seal moment. I don't want to miss the turtle moment. I don't want to miss the hammerhead shark moment. Yes, there's been one of those. No, I didn't have an X3 with me. And I don't know if I've mentioned before, but we are in the Eastern Caribbean now, and it is absolutely fabulous. We're cruising up and down the islands and looking for some snorkel sites that actually will test this. I'm going to put this through its paces without the dive case, and then I'm going to put the dive case on and try it firsthand to see actually if it's going to make any difference at all, and whether those precious moments are going to be caught, or you're going to get a chopped in half leopard seal and regret every moment. So, first things first, we're going to go out there with the uh, GoPro Hero 11 and see how we get on. Let's go with that.
Right, that was the uh, GoPro. Wow, that was good, wasn't it? Saw a stingray and uh, lots of lovely fish. So we're going to swap this over now. And um, hey presto, here it is, the dive case. So let's give it a go, shall we? Let's get in the sea. Get in the sea. Now, if I can, I'm going to try the 360 uh, without, without the dive case. Let's just hope it doesn't crap everything up that I've already done. So, wow, that was good, wasn't it? We managed to get, uh, well, a feeding turtle. I mean, what more could you want? I think by now you've probably come to the conclusion that I have. If you want to do underwater shots with your X3, you're going to need to shell out on a dive case. The results otherwise are, well, let's face it, unusable. The dive case does improve the sharpness, colour, stitching, well, just about everything. And I was so glad I had the dive case on when I spotted that gorgeous turtle. But did the 360 degree footage help in any way? Well, no, simply because it's not sharp enough or at a decent enough focal length to punch in on your subject anyway. And I managed to shoot this lovely footage by getting the camera pretty close using a standard issue invisible selfie stick and by staying very still, so not to disturb the turtle. However, it's also pretty clear that the overall winner here is the GoPro Hero 11. Despite the obvious drawback that it can't film all around itself like the X3, if you stick it on a long pole and point it at your subject, you're going to almost guarantee the best footage and that, at the end of the day, is all that matters when you've only got one chance at getting that dream shot. What do you think? Please leave us a comment as to your preferences. Thank you.